Overnight, the adolescents were thrown into the greatest challenge of their lives. They now have to come to terms with fending for themselves in a world of which they know nothing. They have to establish their hunting territory despite two handicaps. They are male and therefore not so good at hunting and they still have their milk teeth. After a long march to put some distance between them and their dreaded father, the cubs discover a stretch of water. Instinctively, the twins sense that their prey will come to drink here. This, then, will be their hunting ground, their paradise. For what they don't realize is that this territory already has its masters. They have taken up residence in the antechamber of hell. The lords of the manor, the real kings of the jungle, show straight away who's boss around here. Despite their thirst, the twins have to give way and restrain themselves from drinking in the company of the giants. After the elephant's bath, the lion's torment comes to an end at last. This lake is the sole oasis in this sun-scorched corner of the savanna. Not a drop of rain has fallen here for years. Having established their authority, the elephants lose interest in the brothers and set off into their savannah playground. The twins discover the other tenants, a dozen white rhinoceros brought together by the famine. These usually solitary beasts have taken refuge around the lake in search of the last few patches of greenery to graze on. The twins have never seen rhinoceros before, they don't know whether they're edible or dangerous and look for the chinks in their armor. Peaceful by nature, the rhinos rapidly give way to panic, which doubles the lion's excitement. Little by little, the rhinos become aware that the lions are no danger to them and stand their ground the balance of power begins to shift. are insistent. The lions are obliged to leave their territory. A herd of buffalo, 
hungry and thirsty themselves, hurtles towards the sole source of water. The other animals, even the more powerful rhinos, get caught up in their fearsome charge. The dominant males take the lead. They will graze the choicest grass. In the cloud of dust behind them, the weakest bring up the rear. They will become easy prey for the predators. The buffalo are highly attracted to the hindquarters of the females. Some simply rest there, others mount them. The smallest are looking for somewhere to suckle. The males test their strengths on one another. Only the strongest will have the right to mate with the females. Around the lake, overcrowding reigns. Everyone's living space dwindles. A new balance has to be established with fang and horn. The cubs have eaten nothing for a week. The presence of the buffalo sharpens their hunger. But this time the twins do not give up. They challenge the serried horns. They look for prey who show signs of weakness. But the dominant buffalo protect their family. While one dominant male faces off and distracts the lions, the herd imperceptibly surrounds them. sees the least opportunity to remind everybody of their dominant position. Their intervention saves the lions from being encircled. Finally, the lions find easy pickings. At the feet of the rhinoceros lies the body of a stillborn buffalo calf. However, the rhinos are as curious as they are short-sighted. There's a lot of coming and going around the abandoned body as the lions and the rhinos test the balance of power. The herbivores are protecting their last patch of grazing. The carnivores have nothing else to get between their milk teeth. Reduced to scavengers, our lions are falling some way short of their reputation as predators. Slyly, the buffalo have taken advantage of nightfall to entrap the lions. The menacing scent of the young lions clings to their nostrils. With outstretched necks, they show their hostility to these scavengers. Lions are surrounded. For all their proud demeanor, they opt for a strategic withdrawal. The exhausted twins can only dream about the tender flesh of a stillborn buffalo calf.
The drought has scorched the grass right to the roots. The rhinos are all but maddened by hunger pangs. The overcrowding beside the lake makes them more aggressive. Even within family groups, one will fight another for a little bit of territory, a shaded corner, or to be the first to take a drink. The baking heat exhausts the animals beside the ever-shrinking waters of the lake. It's siesta time, a time for truces. The animals watch each other, too weary to start a fight or to assert their place in the pecking order. Their only concern is to cover themselves in mud to keep the sun off. of the parasites, each has to do the best he can. Just hours are passed, the elephants sound the reveille. In their capacity as the lake's policemen, they get everybody back on their feet, even the most unwilling. horns are covered with wounds and scars. What other dramas are being played out around this lake? In fact, the atmosphere is seething with overcrowding and sensuality. This elephant is an orphan. At 10 years old, growing out of adolescence, he's having trouble controlling his first sexual urges. At this age, elephants are too young for the females, so they practice with other young males. This one can't find a partner, so he persecutes a young rhinoceros instead. With no family, no adults to moderate his behavior and serve as role models, he adopts unusual patterns of behavior. Normally, the rut lasts a few days each year. However, the absence of adults makes him precocious and extends it to three months. The elephant's behavior even becomes cruel. There are no forbidden games in the savanna. infuriated by her baby's complaints, finally intervenes. Uh. 
At first, the rhino only amuses the elephant, who is delighted to have a playmate. Then the rhino's resistance finally makes the elephant angry. After he's calmed down, the elephant returns to a young female with whom he has a special emotional attachment, but who's too young for a sexual relationship. They caress each other with their trunks, murmur in each other's ears, and knot their trunks together. The young leopard, too, has been forced by hunger into territory beside the lake. on the other side of the water attracts his attention. The leopard sharpens his claws before setting off in search of prey. The leopard is a solitary and timid animal who needs to live hidden in the trees. When he moves across the savanna, he does so cautiously, shoulders hunched, any large animal frightens him. However, he's exceedingly cunning and dangerous. Unlike the lions, this young predator already has adult teeth, but he has one handicap. He hasn't yet enough strength to lift his prey. Leopard might have satisfied his hunger had not the elephants chosen exactly this spot to uproot some trees and chew on their moist foliage. Fear makes the leopard clumsy. 
His heavy prey might slip from his grasp. the elephant strips the branches in which the leopard is hiding. Then he tires of the game and goes on his way. hides his meal in the tree, but the carcass is too heavy for him to carry right at the top. Once again, the young leopard drops his prey. It catches on a branch out of the lion's reach. The leopard has good reason to fear the lions. They climb trees. <laughs> may still be pilferers and scavengers, but at least they're getting good at it. their meal, the lions leave the frustrated leopard at the top of his tree without so much as a backward glance. The rhinos are on heat. Irritated by the drought and the rampant overcrowding around the lake, the males just don't know who to attack next. They face a fight on all fronts before they can get hold of the females. When they finally manage to persuade a partner, their coupling can last a whole hour. The elephant interrupts the ceremony. The rhino reacts by pushing the elephant into the lake. 
Relations between the two species reach breaking point. The animals are wearing themselves out trying to preserve a minimum of space. Although he's sole master of the field, the elephant keeps his weapons at the ready. Only nightfall restores calm. to find food at all costs. A warthog would do nicely. picked up the scent of the lions. For obvious reasons, he wants to avoid them. The lions have located the warthog's burrow. chance of success is to surprise their prey from upwind. They run out of breath very quickly, so they need to get to within 20 meters, ready to pounce. The cubs, whose milk teeth are no longer than a cat's, cannot deliver a fatal blow to the warthog and have to smother it slowly in an embrace that mingles sensuality and death. This hunt means that the lions have shaken off their status of thieves and scavengers. They have become predators, but their purgatory is far from over. They've forgotten the menacing presence of the other large animals drawn together on the overcrowded banks of the lake. They will not put up with young lions in their territory who, one day, might turn against them. The cubs are obstinate, however, and go on with their meal. Fearful, the twins pluck up courage and make a move in the direction of the females, the weak point of the herd, prompting the start of a stampede. The lords of the jungle take their turn to inspect the lion's meal.
The elephant shows his disgust at the meat and covers it with earth. In the jungle of real life, the lion is not king. Far from it. The leopard has been watching the confrontation. He spotted the carcass abandoned by the lions. But he's wary of the other large animals still present and has to trick them to get his claws on the carrion. his turn to be a scavenger. Sweet revenge on the lion cubs. The leopard never eats his kill on the spot, even if he's ravenous. He needs privacy. The scent of other animals makes him nervous and indecisive. Once again, the carcass is too heavy for him. And the carcass ends the day between the legs of the rhinos. The predators remain watchful and wait quietly for the suffocating heat of the sun to fade before they move in. tasted its own kill will never abandon it. So tonight the lions, who have just made their first kill, will have to recapture their trophy. That will be the proof of their skill, or it will be the end of them. of the warthog are trampled underfoot by the rhinos and the elephants, who form an impregnable fortress of horns and tusks. As soon as the twins start their approach, the rhinos move into triangular formation and advance one at a time, so there's always a sharp horn at the corners. The lions reach the center of the fortress and find their kill at the feet of two rhinos who are not yet ready to give up the field. have learned that two heads are better than one. One draws the rhino away, while the other snatches the carcass. When the elephant threatens them, they play their trick a second time. One sells the dummy, the other carries off the prize.
Tonight, the twins will finally be able to eat their first kill. They have fully qualified as predators and have managed to impose themselves on the parched lakeside. One year later, the sun has nibbled away still further at the South African savanna. The twins have grown and their incisors have become fearsome weapons. The full mane and beard means that they're approaching adulthood. They are three years old and still very affectionate towards one another. However, their playful appearance hides a pair of killers. They are rumored locally to have seriously injured a woman and a young girl. Today is a day for the hunt. They rolled in the droppings of the elephants and the rhinos to polish their coats and camouflage their scents. Every two or three days, the lions start to feel hungry and roam their territory in search of food. The twins reach the lake, still receding because of the drought. The rhinos are becoming more and more numerous. After 16 months gestation, the mothers have given birth. The babies are ideal prey for the lions. They are also the ideal target for the elephant's games. But this baby, a real fireball, is not ready to let them have it all their own way. The young rhinos have grown and are no longer giving in to the sexual advances of the elephant. The elephant, still guided by the need to ensure his control over his territory, seems to take pleasure in knocking the rhinos down like nine pins. The more, the merrier. His behavior is quite outrageous, and he doesn't know when to stop. The rhinos are seething with anger. They gang up to face the elephant, not giving him a moment's rest. Covered in cuts, the elephant abandons the field to the rhinos. The mob have overthrown the elephant king. That night he takes out his anger on the trunks of trees. For a while he disappears from the lakeside.
twins survey the borders of their territory. They're nervous. They've picked up the scent of urine of other lions. Four males of the same age, drawn to the lake by the drought, enter their territory. They're scared of each other. They sniff at each other. They threaten. They try persuasion. Or a show of force. Finally, the matter is resolved peacefully. Caresses are exchanged and one of the twins is recognized as dominant. They sniff his hindquarters as a sign of acceptance. Lions are instinctively aware that they will be increasing their chances of making a kill. returning from a long and exhausting migration. Their route takes them past the lake. But they won't be stopping long. For the lions, it's now or never. meters the lions are winded. They take it in turns to force the wildebeest into a trap. Just when it seems the wildebeest have outrun their pursuers, they fall into the ambush laid by the twins. Exhausted by the chase, demand their portion. But the twins have not yet learned to share. Six young predators seal their alliance with blows of the paw and ferocious stares. United, they push themselves to the pinnacle of the animal hierarchy. Faced by the drought that is covering the savanna with a blanket of suffering, all animals are equal, even the lions. Hunting alone and isolated, the lion has little of the king of the jungle about him. But in a group, they are invincible. Our twins and their new comrades have many good days before them in the territory around the lakeside.